Welcome back to the Maratha Confederacy Abridge campaign where previously we took London as we went off to invade Great Britain as the premise for this campaign. We also held on to our starting territory which we need for money at the start of the game at least. With all that done we're now moving on to our next strike up in Great Britain as a small force goes to attack Scotland. The vague plan for this battle is to walk up to the fort and try to climb on in at the areas where the enemy don't have their troops garrisoned. We of course have mainly melee units right here, so we don't want to do anything fancy, we really just want to get in there and force all of the enemy units on the wall into melee. So I'm setting up moving some units around the place to get to the parts of the fort that would be defended as heavily. We also have guns so we can try to open up a breach as well which would really help. However things started to go a bit wrong. First, the casualties I was taking from the enemy's garrison mortars inside were very large as I was walking up to the fort. Mortars are much more effective under AI control than under your control, they're one of those kinds of units, where they also suffer from having a really low accuracy if you fire them or semi-random firing arcs, but not for the AI. We also had some trouble with our cannons because they refused to fire a lot of the time. What I found was happening was they would shoot one volley that gave the manual attack order on the wall a couple of times and then they just glitch out again so that wasn't particularly useful we uh, didn't actually manage to open up the wall and in the end we lost one of our two guns to the enemy's return fire so that plan kind of went out the window and then i noticed the enemy were doing something incredibly cheeky they were moving their units to be in position to stop me after i walked over to the undefended parts of the fort I was flabbergasted by this because I just imagined they would ignore me like later Total War AI does. There's actually a good part of the AI here, it's stopping me from getting in for free and we actually can't do this as a result. Our units rout under the artillery and small arms fire combined morale shocks once we get near the wall, so I wasn't able to climb up and get some melees going like I wanted. And after I failed with these two units here, I thought well this just isn't going to happen and I decided to give up on this assault and withdraw everything. As I do we get a classic withdrawal explosion bug where your guys withdraw in every possible direction. I've had some fun with that before, you can get your guys to quote unquote withdraw into the enemy fort and start fighting them on the inside which is quite good. But in this case we just leave the battle before anything too weird happens and away we go. The attack has failed and we lost a couple of hundred troops in the process. We need to not attack the fort basically, we need to get them to sally or get more troops up here to help out. In the meantime though, the English are going to begin their rebellions. As mentioned last time, public order will be an issue for us here. We're just going to have to slaughter all of these rebel armies as they appear. In the turn after dealing with that first rebellion, I put together a bit of a better force to go for Scotland. This time they've got a couple of units of regular infantry defending the place, but that's all fine. We're not going to go for a fort attack, we're just going to stand here and try to get them to attack us. I'm also now starting to disband some of my units back in India, because we can't really afford to upkeep our defenders here. So we really need to get the British Isles secured right away so we can just give up on India and then get our finances in order. And handily enough the Edinburgh garrison does sally, just what we needed. So now we face the same units as before and more, but in a much more favourable situation. I was going to corner camp, but the enemy deployed with their mortars at the front, so they were in range of all of the corner basically, meaning I just wanted to get the charges going as soon as possible. We do have some actual gun units that I'm using in the centre to have a little bit of a shootout with the enemy, but for the most part I'm focusing on getting swordsmen and cav to attack the flanks of their position. That's going to do the business. And already over here you can see we've got them engaged, that's going to stop them shooting and hopefully start them dying. As long as our men don't rout before the fight starts, we have a pretty good chance against most of the ranged units. The only problem is our melee units don't have the best morale and as we saw in the previous battle, they can just rout due to being under a small arms fire, so running at the enemy from the front isn't ideal. But in this case we don't need to do too much of that. We completely outflank and destroy the enemy units. They start to chain route since most of them are going to be like firelock units and militia units with low morale. That wasn't too hard in this case. Then we just kind of converge everywhere and start slaughtering everything. And that all looks good and normally it would be, but in Empire Total War it's not quite so. If you check the results here, the enemy only killed like 200 of our men, but we lost 600 men. 
and that's because of the charge bonus doing friendly fire that I mentioned in the last episode. Well, not even the charge bonus, just having cavalry that are trying to attack something be in your own units kills your units because of a kind of trample damage mechanic that only takes place if you give an attack order. You can run through your own men, you just can't charge through your own men. Anyway, the point is that didn't go all that well, but we still took Edinburgh. Looks like there are still a few units up there to take out before Scotland is totally secured. But at least public order will be good here, it's not a faction capital. So it's much more reasonable to get this place under control. We probably won't have to fight rebellion after rebellion. After that, there was a big battle back in India because absolutely tons of Mughal Empire troops are swarming our capital right now. I could just auto resolve and get rid of this army because we don't necessarily need this territory right now, but I thought I probably could use it for another turn to keep the money coming in. And while the battle does actually look quite difficult, they could just melee attack the walls from all directions and probably overwhelm us. It's a siege defense in Empire Total War, so really anything can happen. We start off with a nice skirmish against some horse archers from our position in cover and with our guns. So that should work out pretty well. I think our guys might have been actually firing the fort cannons as well today. So that will help us out. We can beat this first unit thanks to the enemy for sending them out on their own. But soon everything else will spam its way over. They do have some cannons as well. Luckily they're not in the best position. They can sort of see the fort. Some of their shots were hitting the walls but usually they weren't. So I felt okay to sit on the wall myself. It doesn't take many shots to blow up a fort wall, so if they have clear line of sight, you just can't vent the wall at all. Now the enemy decided to plant some infantry in front of my gunners and do nothing for quite a long time. Obviously perfect, this is the sort of thing I meant when I said anything could happen, the AI might just throw it all away. And at the back, they kill their own general with their cannon, exactly again what I'm looking to see, just random stupid stuff happening that will allow us to overcome the enemy's advantage. Looks like these guys have moved a bit closer to the wall, but they are still just standing there and dying, so that's helping us out early on. Now we're starting to lose frames because there are too many smoke effects or something going on, so we'll have to try and plow through this. It looks like some more enemies are thinking about climbing, they've still got guys standing in front of our gunners but I believe they're just constantly repositioning them, and once they get close enough, they'll give the order to climb and this thing will get started. <laughs> They've got other units, as you can see there, standing around other parts of the fort. But for a long time, we pick up a lot of kills. Well, I say a lot of kills, obviously this looks really good. Our gunners kind of suck, so we're not getting that many kills doing this, but it is ruining the enemy's morale. You can see units running away all over the place because the small arms fire plus their captain being dead is enough to demoralize various units in the enemy's army, so that's handy. But more and more are gradually setting up. They're building their forces at the foot of the wall. And once they're ready, they do start to come on in. Here's the main attack they're going to make here at the back of the fort, where a massive blob is climbing up. And now all we have to do is get a blob in front of them and get the fighting going. Looks like my general with his elephants is technically in melee with the unit on the other side of the wall. That's a nice glitch because it stops the unit on the other side climbing, but they can't damage us, so nothing's going to happen there. Good job. Need to try and get these guys who are kind of stuck doing nothing in the middle of the wall to come and help out in the fight. We're just going to plow all of our swordsmen into that melee and see what happens. On the other side of the fort, they brought over another of their generals on some elephants and they got shot, so we've picked up the kills of both commanders of the two enemy armies here. That's going to make this way easier. Now unfortunately, this gate on the north side of the fort proved to be less closed than I thought it was going to be. It was under our control. We had the gatehouse, but I think the gates were opening and closing over and over again as my men walked past or something. So a lot of enemies started to sneak their way in early and bypass the brawl on the wall. That brawl's a pretty brutal one, both sides just gonna take huge casualties, but I can just throw everything into this because I don't need this army I have here to survive for that long. We can sacrifice anything just to hold this place an extra turn and get a few thousand in money out of the capital before we truly depart India. More units are standing in front of the gunners, that's still happening, and somehow the fort walls haven't been targeted very much by the enemy's cannons. They do now have two sets of cannons on the field, but not much has happened as a result, that's perfect. Here you can see the effect of the gates opening and closing over and over again. Quite a lot of stuff's kind of got through, but they're stuck there in the gatehouse because other bits of their unit are still on the other side of the gates. So now I need to set up for a fight there and try to clear out all of these camels in particular. 
Since they're in a big blob, we can shoot into that pretty safely and we might actually get some hits. And it's also safe to move up close because they are kind of stuck there. I've also got some basically dead remnants of units that are still fighting there. That's going to help hold them in position as well. Might grab some kills every now and again. I think what's going to end up happening here is the group of camels routes, but it's still stuck here. Camels have low morale, so they're easy to route even at full strength. And then because they're stuck, we're going to be able to wipe them out, really. I'm guessing it's because things like foot units, once they're in your fort but they route, they can pathfind down the ropes off the side of the fort walls and escape, like those guys running away there. But the camels are just stuck, so they give up on life and just gradually die. Dying less gradually is everyone up on the wall. Here's that main brawl again. The floor absolutely carpeted in corpses, but it looks like it's more of their corpses than ours. Good stuff, but there's still loads more enemy stuff on the way in. This is the advantage they have when they bring two stacks to the battle. Because melees tend to be sort of one-to-one -one ratios between melee units, if they can just bring double the stuff, that's going to help them out a lot. I've got some mortars firing into that melee, or now into just the blob of people standing around really. But as mentioned, mortars fire kind of random, and in this case, after firing a couple of shots, we don't see shots land, well, in the melee or anywhere near the melee. In fact, we don't see them land at all. They landed far away enough to be off screen as far as we can see here. So I don't know what the mortars are doing. And whenever I try to closely inspect where they're firing, they're just doing something stupid. As mentioned, I think it's similar to Bowman, where they just don't work if the player has them. The battle then switched focus because their cannons started hitting the wall a bit more, and they opened up a breach and the enemy's army started coming through it. And again, we just deploy everything into the breach to stop them at all costs. And while we're taking enormous casualties, the enemy R2 and the enemy's morale is low with those commanders being dead, so that helps out. Basically, we have waves where they keep coming in, dying, and then going away. So here's one such wave. This is like 45 minutes into the battle, by the way, all real time. I've cut this down a lot just because this fight doesn't matter that much in the grand scheme of things. But it was a massive and epic battle when I played it. So here they come in, charging into the gunners with their dervishes. All we need to do is sacrifice all of our populace and stuff to bring a few of them down to rout them. Here the gunners get a nice close range volley and with that volley I think we friendly fire killed our own general. Great stuff and now the morale on our side is starting to waver as a result. This would be an embarrassing way to lose the battle but luckily enough we don't. The enemy units keep routing and soon the time limit runs out so we win because of that. A heroic victory. We did lose something like 80% of our defending force. We were getting slaughtered right there but we also repulsed the enemy. They lost like 80% as well. Very good stuff. And all of that was just for a little bit of money really. But it may not actually come to anything if we still lose the place this turn. And I mention that because Portugal, who are at war with us, I think because of the French also being at war with us, they're allied at the moment or something, they come and attack the fort again. For some reason it spawns a whole bunch of garrison mortars. That's a bad start. Also hindering us, it's a clear line of sight on the artillery day. They can see the fort. That means the wall will be under threat and we probably are going to get some breaches pretty soon. They also weren't so hesitant about attacking the wall, so a bit less of the standing around and just dying method this time. They're going to get some ropes up and begin to climb. At least with line infantry, they do have a tendency to stop and try to shoot you, which doesn't really do anything, so that delays the attack as well. And they're actually not coming up via very many ropes, which caused a big queue. That helps out, since we don't have that much stuff to defend. But they did cause a breach with their cannons, so a bunch of their units can just run on into the fort. And now just whatever we have here has to try and fight them in melee and we'll just see what happens. One advantage I guess you could say we have in this fight is that we just need to win with one guy left alive. We can sacrifice everything to try and stop the enemy, and I suppose I will. Here they are climbing up to fight our gunners. I think our gunners are good in melee. You can see they kind of look armoured. They have really high melee defence as a result. Plus, the enemy have a lot of militia units among their attacking force as well, which aren't that good in terms of any of their stats, really. So now we just hold on. The fights are going and hopefully we'll win enough. Enough being with one guy left over, as I said. Our trash mob are able to hold off some militia over there. The trash mob have swords, which makes me think there's a they are a melee unit. 
but that doesn't necessarily mean they have melee attack and defense stats, it's not quite how it works in Total War games. I think our mortars, of which we have loads, are firing generally into the melees and they may or may not be doing anything, but one thing they're going to achieve is causing morale shocks, because if any mortar hits land anywhere near the enemy, they'll get the under artillery attack morale shock and that's going to help us out. Looks like we had a homunculus there for us to fight on the wall, that goes well. Here's something that helps out, one of the enemy units, which was probably targeted to attack us, decides to make this wild charge off into the distance, but then someone informs them of what's going on and they gradually wheel that around and make a less wild charge towards the breach where you can see some of the enemy's units already routing away. This breach is where it's going to happen really, we routed the enemies who climbed onto the wall, now we just need to slaughter everything here. I think it was at this point I cottoned on to the fact that our mortars might be just hitting our own men. As mentioned, the mortars are firing somewhat randomly, sometimes including backwards, although that may be the mortars at the other side of the forge just not being able to get their shots all the way down range. Good stuff. So I actually stopped the mortars from firing into the melee at this point, thinking they might route our units more than the enemies. So the melee goes on for a while, skipping to the end. We did win. We lost a whole bunch of stuff, obviously, but the enemy routed and we hold the breach. They did still have more units, but luckily for us, they were kind of in disabled mode again, sitting at the back of the map. I didn't want to wait for the timer to run out, which is what I have to do here, to win without taking any more casualties. So instead, I sent out some of the trash to get the battle going again. The melee trash goes and attacks the guns and successfully takes them down, while these ranged trash will fire at the enemy's pikemen here. Now we can aggro the pikes and get them moving again, pulling them over towards the fort. Looks like unfortunately the melee trash just kind of routed after they won their fight as well, I think because they realized they were outflanked. The units kind of look to their sides to determine their morale and they can't be outflanked just by being near the enemy. So they're gone. Then the pikes come over to the fort and charge my trash below the wall. Even though I have the support from the gunners above, Pikes are pretty good in melee, so they'll just absolutely slaughter all of our stuff out here, and in fact they rout straight away. Now then though, the pikes kind of glitch out again. They go back into doing nothing mode in a loose formation here and just stand in front of the guns. Their loose formation did vex me for a while, I had to shoot them so many times to get enough kills to rout this unit. Luckily I didn't run out of ammo and we did actually manage to do that and their general route somewhere as well. Bringing the battle to an end, we're now even more dead than we were before, but we still have this territory. It's in wrecked condition, but I'm sure it's making us a bit of money. Back in Scotland, I'm going to split our army here. Some units stay behind to keep the city under control and others go out to chase the nearby British force. Nothing happens during that end turn, so we reach them in the next turn. And it's just a fight where it's basically an auto resolve, but we need to do it manually because the balance bar disagrees and we don't want to lose too many extra troops. Things start off with their calf rushing out and they rush towards my camels. They're gunner camels, so that's not ideal, but I think camels do have some kind of bonus when fighting against calf. I didn't want to fight in the melee. What I wanted to do is have my lancers distract the enemy in the melee and then have the camel gunners just stand right next to things and shoot into it. I've also got the elephants here on the way over as well, just for added fun. The problem is, when you give a unit a fire order in an old Total War game, there's no knowing what they're actually going to do. In this case, they do a little rotation dance thing, ready to set up and fire. Kind of wanted them to just shoot from where they were before at point blank range, but this is something. Finally, a couple of them do get shots off. Not really going to do anything because they all had to reload. But I think this will give the enemy the under small arms fire morale debuff just because like one bullet went past them or something. I think that's how it works. In this case, we don't need to do anything special because the elephants are here and the elephants certainly give the enemy morale debuff. The camel gunners finally shoot, probably shooting as many of our own things as the enemies, but it does the business. Those cav are gone. Now we close in on their infantry and their general. This is another case where just kind of running around in all directions will make the infantry rotate ready to fire at things and that allows you to charge them like right from the front without taking a barrage of gunfire. That's going to be extra important later in the campaign when they could fire by rank at us if we just run at them from the front. Their general fights with our lancers was a bit worried about that because generals cav are certainly better than our lancers, at least the general himself. 
dies pretty much right away. That's perfect, that will help us out a lot. Now the elephants are coming in for a rear attack on their line infantry, their best unit, and their lesser stuff we're just going to hope to overwhelm by fighting them from all sides. And like 20 seconds later, here we are, everything starts routing, that's going to be a win for us. Lost like 100 guys, nothing too bad. Unfortunately, a couple of enemy units did survive the engagement and they ran off. So I split this force again, having just the more mobile units go after them to get another battle going. That's a win, and finally, Scotland is totally secure. Our next move will be to gather together some troops to go across the little land bridge crossing thing there to attack Dublin and finally expel Great Britain, not only from the British Isles, but from the game if you lose your home region, or you lose all your territories in your home region, you automatically lose the game. And on that topic, I had to do a bit of meddling at this point. You can see here, my capital is now considered to be London, England, instead of that place back in India. I didn't actually film how I did this. It took an extremely long time of looking on the internet for how you edit save files. And there was an extremely roundabout way of changing what your capital is in a save file. So now, we are a European faction in the game's logic. This just means we can focus on Europe and safely lose our Indian territories. This is now like our colony, so nothing happens if we lose it. And that will just allow me to disband units over there in the future and generally not focus the content of this series on what's happening here because that's just a normal Maratha playthrough. This is the special Reverse Raj playthrough. We are going to do some antics over here. So yes, the next two things we'll need to do are to take out Great Britain and then decide what to do next. We're already at war with France and the United Provinces who occupy all of the nearest parts of Europe. So I think an invasion of Europe will be on the cards. Why don't you join me for part three to get that going?